Welcome to Shannon's Club TV, where we relive the histories of classic cars on Australian roads and racetracks. In each episode, we review our feature car with rare archival images, new insights and an owner's well-preserved example. We'll also get some market tips from the Shannon's auctions team. In this episode, we look back at the Holden model, which included the hatchback and the fabulous A9X, the LX Tirana. The LH Tirana is one of the few cars in history designed to accommodate four-cylinder, six-cylinder and V8 engines. And yet, the LH was almost an anti-climax. The most important news had to wait for the LX in February 1976. GMH had originally planned to launch the exciting hatchback alongside the LH sedan, but simply couldn't get it ready in time. Little else was newsworthy about the LX except the column mounted stalk for headlight flash and dipping. It also got a soft feel steering wheel and plusher upholstery. Apart from the stillborn Leyland 4.7, this was Australia's first offering of the increasingly fashionable configuration pioneered in Europe by Renault with its 16. It brought a new sports-focused feel to the Tirana, especially in SS 5-litre guise. Mark, mm. did the new hatchback immediately displace the sedan as the preferred race car? Oh, it sure did. I mean, even though most of the A9X road cars produced were based on the sedan, uh, Holden's sales and marketing guru, John Bagshaw, really wanted to push the new hatchback as the corporate race car, mainly because he just preferred the look of it. But you've also got to take into account being a two-door, it was torsionally stiffer than a four-door, so there were performance benefits. And you'd think with that beautiful fastback Aero. shape, yeah, aerodynamically, yeah. it was probably better too. So there were performance benefits in that decision as well. In many ways, the Tirana hatchback was a brilliant concept. From the A-pillar back, it was a completely new car, and its design reflected the Chevrolet Monza, while also referencing the brilliant Fiat 850 Coupe. But that elegant shape entailed one major compromise. The main luggage area was almost unbelievably shallow. At least there was a little more space beneath the floor where the spare wheel was housed. Headroom in the rear was tight. An ingenious $65 hatch hutch option was intended in some way to compensate for the lack of a wagon or fashionable panel van variant. It is just so mid-1970s, like the orange stripes on a black SS hatchback. Cheaper than the SS was the SL, but both variants came standard with a 3.3 litre 6 and 4 speed manual gearbox. Either could be optioned with a 4.2 litre or 5 litre V8. The manual 5 litre SS ran the standing 400 in 15.6 seconds, but understeer prevailed and the car tended to slew sideways under emergency braking. Radial tuned suspension fixed these shortcomings. First came the otherwise boring four-cylinder Sunbird, but in August 1977, Holden quietly launched its most exciting car to date, the fabulous A9X. Mm. Mark, who could forget that footage of Peter Brock breaking the lap record at Mount Panorama on his final lap of the 1979 race. Yeah, just unforgettable. But it was one of many magical moments for one of Holden's true immortals. The catalyst for the creation of Holden's ultimate Tirana, the A9X, in 1977, was a humiliating defeat suffered by its LH sedan-based predecessor, the L34. Up until then, the L34 had been a consistent winner since its debut three years earlier. As a result, Holden had done little to improve it, even though it was inherently fragile, as highlighted by its feeble M21 gearbox and drum brake banjo rear axle assembly, which were barely adequate for racing duties behind a powerful 5 litre V8. However, after getting trounced by a two-car factory-backed Moffat Ford attack in the first half of the 1977 season, Holden was rudely shaken out of its complacency and had to move heaven and earth to develop and homologate its LX Tirana-based replacement, the A9X, in time for the all-important Bathurst 1000 in October. John, there's nothing like genuine competition to make a car manufacturer get off its backside, and that really happened in 1977. Absolutely. Well, yeah. When you think about the A9X and <laughs> yeah. you think about LX Tirana, without mm. the A9X, LX Tirana would be 
really eminently forgettable. It would, wouldn't it? I think, yeah. That was like a, like a halo car. We'd Before be... that term was invented, it yeah. certainly was a halo car or a hero car. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And in terms of collectability nowadays, the A9X drags that whole Alex Turan oh. range with it when you go further down in the sedans. Yeah, and... Well, look, in my opinion, the A9X was absolutely the standout Holden of all Holdens made up to that time. Yeah, good point. Yeah. Mm. Available in both sedan and new three-door hatchback body styles, the A9X's key objective was to fix all of the L34's weaknesses. The changes were extensive, including stronger engine, gearbox and rear axle components, plus revised suspension geometry based on Holden's widely praised radial tuned suspension. Although the A9X was rushed into battle, Peter Brock enjoyed a debut win at the Sandan 400 and claimed pole position at Bathurst. However, due to various new car niggles, the A9X could not stop the Moffat Fords claiming their famous 1-2 in the race, which fired up GMH to retaliate with brute force. The results for the A9X over the next two seasons were emphatic, claiming an AMSCAR series, two Australian Touring Car Championships and two Sandan 400s, plus two famous Bathurst 1000 wins for Jim Richards and Peter Brock. Their record winning margin in 1979 was six laps. It could be said that the A9X was too good for its own good, as its crushing success forced a shell-shocked Ford to withdraw from the sport and prompted GMH to do the same, given that it ended up mostly competing against private entrants driving the same cars. The A9X was, quite simply, the ultimate Tirana. Don't forget, you can find your favourite car club or event on the Shannon's Club website. My name's Grant and this is my 1977 A9X Tirana sedan. The colour is flamenco red with slate black vinyl interior before in this colour combination. It has a 5 litre 308 cubic inch V8, M21 4 speed and a Salisbury diff which also has 4 wheel disc brakes. The car is completely stock standard, as it would have rolled off the production line from GMH in 1977. This was one of 405 A9Xs produced. There were 305 sedans and 100 hatchbacks. This is a special car because it was built to do one thing and that was win races at Bathurst. My first car was a Tirana. It was a six cylinder SL and I've owned another six. I just, I just love the look, they look mean. Yeah, there's nothing like them on the road really. And I've always wanted the A9X. I had the opportunity to buy one and um, yeah, I jumped at it. The only thing I've done to the car since I've owned it is um, cleaned it and polished it. I've done absolutely nothing to it. I just want to keep it original and stock standard. Yeah, my favourite memory of the car was when I actually had it delivered to my house. Um, when the carrier pulled up and I saw it and walked outside and saw the back of the truck open and I just saw this grouse looking Tirana sitting in the back of the truck. The guy had to start it and reverse it off the, the carrier. It was just awesome, the, just the, the sound of that exhaust. The rear spoiler, it's the SLR 5000 written on the back, I'll, I'll never forget it. My future plans for the car are to keep it in the family and hopefully pass it down through the generations and just educate my kids on what they are and what they meant to Australia. Well, Tiny Hanson from the Shannon's Auctions team joins us to discuss the LX Tirana. Welcome, mate. Thanks, mate. How are you going? Hello, Tiny. Hey, John. The LX Tirana. Mm. Yep. You can't help but think sedan hatchback. Is there a real difference in the collectability of the two? Mm. For sure. Look, yeah, sedan or hatchback doesn't really matter. It's they're both collectible. Yeah. But the pinnacle, by far, the hatchback. Yeah. By far. And I guess that's linked to the famous A9X model. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Now A9X Tiranas. I mean, we had them. At the, most of them were built in sedans, but less a number of hatchbacks. Yes. I guess that makes the hatchback A9X the one people are chasing most. That's exactly right. Yeah. A lot of them were raced and crashed, um, unfortunately, through the sort of late 80s and early 90s, but mm. they're the ones to get the hatchback. And if you find them with a hatch hutch, 
They're doing, oh. they're doing very, very well. So very the, well the hatch indeed. hatch by itself would, would have collectability, wouldn't it? Oh, for so. sure. Yeah, 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 yeah for oh. sure. They, they change hands for a lot of money. Hatch hatches. A yeah. lot, lot more than they cost when they were new. And, oh, and, and um, very few buyers actually wanted them mm. when they were new. Yes. Yeah, but it was just, I just think of it as so 1970s. Yeah. Like the, like the orange stripes on them. Yep. Oh, yeah, so the on. panel yeah. van craze yeah. and getting out on the road and seeing you know, the wide open country. Talking about the hatchback, that's quite interesting because you had SS hatchbacks and you get one of a 5 litre V8 and it also came with the 202 six cylinder yeah. engine. Now, how would an SS six cylinder rank in terms of collectability? It would be up there for sure. Yeah. Um, not as desirable as the V8 model, mm. but at the end of the day, I don't think I've ever seen. No, they'd be pretty rare. Very rare. Very rare. Yeah, for sure. A I, lot mean, of them, it, it, I think a lot of them with the six cylinders mm. over the years would have been. It'd be like it'd be like they're in the showroom there and they want the SS5 liter. They just can't exactly. quite get the fine. <laughs> can't get the pain, so they have to go it. back to the six yeah. cylinder. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And we know RTS, or radio tuned suspension, was introduced in this Tirana range, but it was only about halfway through. So there's RTS Tiranas and non-RTS Tiranas. Does that affect the values? I don't think so. No? Yeah, look, if you're lucky enough to find a good A9X, whether it be a sedan or a, or a hatch, mm -hmm. it's not going to make any difference whether it's got an RTS or not. It's yeah. not as if you can choose what, which colour you're going to buy. You have to choose what's on the market. And what about the cars further down the pecking order? The L, the SL, the SLR? SLR 5000, I mean these sort of cars, they sit a, a level below A9X. Definitely a level below. Yeah. The, the, um, the top of, the, of that range would be the, the SLR 5000 yeah. and then they go down to the 4.2 and then the SLs etc. Okay, very good. Yeah. Well thanks Tiny. No worries. And remember you can keep up to date with all the latest Shannon's Auctions news on the Shannon's Club website. If you'd like your own image of the LX Tirana in competition, visit Autopic's incredible motorsport photo archive. Interesting looking back at the LX Tirana, John, because you know not only radial tuned suspension, but other mechanical changes they made. Really quite a pivotal car in Holden history, wasn't it? It was, and it's mm. interesting to see how that car, the LH LX, taken as one model, basically, mm. with the choice of the four, six, or eight cylinder engines, yeah. paved the way mm. for an even more important car, which of course was the VB Commodore. The Commodore, yeah. Yes. But it was a real game changer for me. I mean, you know, with the the handling that Holdens had suffered up to the point they brought in RTS. I remember the first time I drove an RTS equipped Holden, I thought, wow, like so it just it was it just changed the game. It's as if they had the wrong badge on the car, wasn't it? It really? was. It yeah. was it was phenomenal. I didn't recognise yes. it as a Holden when I first drove it. That was pretty much my feeling too. Yeah, I think that's yeah. the way we'll remember Alex Tirana. Indeed. Yeah. Well, we hope you've enjoyed looking back on Holden's highly praised LX Tirana range, and we look forward to your company next time on Shannon's Club TV. Bye for now.